For this adventure, I would head to South Dakota and to ride in the very beautiful Black Hills with my new friends at Strider, as they'd invited me to take part in the Dakota 600, an annual four day riding experience. So to start things off, I pop into Rice's and pick up a machine, and they have loads of choice. Inside you can find new and used motorcycles, side by sides, and even boats. But I'm only here for two wheels. So, which bike shall I pick? Well, I was looking for something that I could enjoy the mountain turns on, but easily go off-road to get a bit adventurous. So I chose the new and very stylish 1200 Triumph Scrambler, a machine that would allow me to do just that. After a quick rundown on the how-tos, it was then time to gear up and head out. A short blast down the road and I'd soon be at Strider, the balance bike company that's got millions of kids riding on two wheels. Now having a young boy that loved his little Strider bike and rode it until literally the wheels started to fall off it, prompted me to write to Ryan the founder and express our gratitude. Well it turns out that Ryan is also an avid motorcycle rider and now so is his son, who when he was only two years old Ryan created the first prototype, which has now led into the Strider bikes that they sell around the world today. And every year he takes part in a local ride that helps raise funds to keep motorcycle trails in the Black Hills open. So I joined Ryan and his son Bodie as they will now show me around their backyard. It was so great to finally meet Ryan and his son Bodie and also come for a tour around their offices as my son Gio has enjoyed years of fun ripping around our yard on his strider and I've witnessed firsthand its many benefits. So Ryan, please tell me, how did this all start? Strider was a Saturday afternoon project in my garage. I've been a motorcycle and mountain bike enthusiast for as long as I can remember. Started riding dirt bikes when I was a little kid. And when I became a dad, I was just super excited to share this passion of mine with my young son. And so when he was two, he had a whole lineup of ride-on toys, tricycle, little bike with training wheels, uh, even a little Yamaha 50 with training wheels, I mean, a whole fleet. These things were all too big, too heavy, too complicated for him. So I really started looking at his size and his weight. And then I also was thinking about what's the fundamental skill that he needs? Simply balancing on two wheels, that's what ties bicycling and motorcycling together. So I started chopping up a little bike for him. That led to what is now the Strider. Now we sell worldwide. We've sold over two million bikes. I figure with all the hand-me-downs to siblings and cousins and everything, we've probably taught over five million kids how to ride bikes here at Strider. You know, a number of years into the business, I really realized that there are a lot of kids that just never learn how to even ride a bicycle, ever, at any age. They just never learn. To me, it was a milestone of childhood to be in charge of your own mobility and uh, feeling the freedom and independence that that provides. Wow, what a great story. I'm from such a simple beginning. Now Ryan, you've also started a foundation to help get kids riding in kindergarten. Can you please explain to me a bit more about all that? So we started a foundation, Strider Education Foundation, and our campaign really is all kids bike. We are on a mission to get every single kindergarten kid in America on a bike and teaching them how to ride in kindergarten class. So All Kids Bike is our big vision for America. The screen addiction, the obesity, the sedentary lifestyles, these major problems that we are facing as a society. 
can be addressed as easily as getting all kids on bikes. You know, it doesn't have to be this niche, but riding a bike is good for all kids, all walks of life, any business or organization that is interested in children's health should be interested in this program. Absolutely, a great course. Now you've invited me here to ride in the Black Hills. So what can I expect to experience while I'm here? So the Black Hills are in Western South Dakota. So there's some really cool granite formations, lots of streams, lots of vegetation and wildlife, Custer State Park and buffalo herds. It really is an amazing concentration of scenery in a very small area. So there's just a network of roads like crazy. A lot of times when you're riding off-road, you kind of drive way out to a trailhead and you unload and then you head even further out and there's nothing around. It, it's very different here. You, you feel like you're remote. You're in the hills if you want to pop out for a burger about 15 minutes, you can be at a burger joint from where you swear was the middle of nowhere. Well, with all of that being said, I just can't wait to get out there and explore. So we quickly hit the road and venture off into the hills. Now Ryan and Bodhi were riding a couple of modified Harley Sportsters, which thanks to a few mods and a tyre change, they could also hit the dirt. So the plan over the next couple of days would be a mixture of epic roads and some fun graded trails. And first up will be the amazing Iron Mountain Road, and what has been called one of the most unusual and captivating roads in America. Just out of Keystone, and on our way to Custer State Park, the 16A takes you on a magical tour through the forest. With a speed limit of just 35 miles per hour, mainly so you can enjoy the views and appreciate this road for what it really is, an historical work of art. As well as the beauty of the mountains and the fun ride around the corners, this road is so much more, as the 17 miles take you around 314 curves, three spiral pigtail bridges, three tunnels and two splits. And if that wasn't enough, you get four chances to view the Mount Rushmore residence. No, this is a ride like no other. just ride up and then down Iron Mountain Road. We then moved on to the tight switchbacks and hairpin bends. And then through another one of these small tunnels, which apparently were all blown out of the granite with dynamite back in the 1920s. This would then lead us to a scenery change as we enter Custer State Park, which is 71,000 acres of lush countryside, as well as being home to an abundance of wildlife. Amongst that wildlife is one of the largest buffalo herds, as over 1,300 stroll around these parts. So we kept our eyes open to see if we could spot some.
having no luck on the road, we turned off on a trail to cut across to the other side of the park. came out on the other side. There they were. Oh wow, they were right next to the road and there was a line of traffic just slowly rolling past. So we nervously decided to just go for it and creep past ourselves, being very careful not to startle these huge 2,000 pound wild animals. What a great experience, but now, let's eat. Time for a burger. <laughs> Angus beef burger with brisket, bacon, Swiss cheese, pepper jack, mushrooms and jalapenos. It was big bites all round to end a day of some incredible sights and riding. I just can't wait for more tomorrow. The next morning we departed from Keystone and the first thing on the list today will be Mount Rushmore. We got a glimpse of those unique rock carvings on the Iron Mountain Road, but I really wanted to get a closer look. So we headed straight for the National Monument. Originally designed and created to draw tourism to the state, faces of four past US presidents were carved into the granite face of Mount Rushmore. Construction began in 1927 and ended in 1941 due to lack of funding. As the original design, each president will be portrayed from head to waist. The magnificent carvings of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln are surrounded by the beauty of the Black Hills. And it is a truly incredible site and construction project, which nowadays attracts more than 2 million visitors per year. After leaving the faces behind, we then turned off and hit the trails. It was so much fun sliding around on these well graded trails as we now made our way across to another incredible road. But this time, we'd get there on the back roads. abundance of old logging roads and gold mining trails, South Dakota is just littered with great gravel roads, and this one was 
was a beauty. popping out on the famous Needles Highway. Our wheels would now leave the gravel and hit the pavement as we rode into more fantastic scenery and brilliant corners. Finished in 1922, after originally being marked out on foot, the Needles Highway is named after the high granite, needle-like formations it winds among, and the Needles Eye will greet you at the summit, as well as another impressive tunnel. It's a spectacular ride, as the granite formations pierce through the forest, and the road twists back and forth. That was a great morning ride. So now we called in for some lunch and to grab another tasty bite. That was awesome. With our belly satisfied, we would then get back on our bikes. But it was a scorching hot day in the Black Hills. And as we rode past this idyllic lake and watched others cool off, we then decided to head back into the forest as Ryan knew of a remote place we could ride to, hike to and then take a dip. So in no time we were back on the trails and then I got to experience firsthand the incredible work that funds from the Dakota 600 had gone to in previous years as we passed through streams that have been lined with concrete to stop erosion, which then allows both the water to keep flowing as well as vehicles to pass. It's a scorching hot day here in South Dakota. We are absolutely big, so we've hiked down to a place called Hippie Hole, and now we're gonna refresh and take a dip. Let's get changed. After stripping off, it was then time to get wet. Nicely cooled off and now ready to ride. We continued the fun in the water by splashing through a few puddles.
after a fun afternoon in the scorching sun, we were all very happy to see some kids selling some fresh ice cold lemonade at the side of the road. Right. Cheers buddy, Cheers. great time man. Eh? It had been a great couple of days riding in South Dakota and the Triumph Scrambler had been an awesome machine to ride as it had taken me on many epic roads and trails through the Black Hills. But with just two days left and after tasting the dirt I'd like to explore more. So let's swap these wheels for some dirt friendly ones and get deeper into those forests. So tune in to the next episode when we go and explore more of the beautiful Black Hills. And the best bit about this is the best burger in the hills. Camera, are you good? Guys, I've never done riding like this before in my life. And I've ridden a lot of shit. Now say time for a burger. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs>